All right, all right, all righty, all right. What's going on, everybody? My name is Pete, but you probably already knew that. But in case you didn't, you guys are watching the one and only Paid to Drive and Pay to Drive Vlogs, day number 1323 coming at you hope you're all having a great one out there um if this is your first time on my channel first and foremost welcome leave a comment in the chat or the comments down below saying first timer so i can welcome you but if you've been here before leave a comment saying before in the chat or the comments down below saying before like so i can respond and welcome you back and if you drive for apps like grubhub doordash uber eats or any of the others you should definitely be subscribed to this channel with all notifications turned on and all that and of course Hit that like button. Let's get 150 thumbs up. It's not thumbs up. Thumbs up and let's jump into it. So big shout out to Roger Eddington for sharing this article. Um, it's a little bit of a lengthy one, but I'll read you know a good chunk of it so you get the point. So listen to this. Will permanent fee caps actually reign in delivery apps? Last week, San Francisco's Board of, Advi of Supervisors, not advisors, voted unanimously to approve a permanent cap on the delivery fees third-party apps like DoorDash and Grubhub are allowing to charge restaurants for each order. It is the first permanent cap on delivery fees in the country, potentially heralding a lasting shift in the way that delivery apps charge restaurants and consumers as the industry emerges from the pandemic. Complaints about exorbitant, uh, yeah, exorbitant delivery commissions as high as 30% in some instances were not uncommon before the pandemic began. But they reached a pinnacle last year as many restaurants were forced to drastically alter their business models to include large-scale takeout and delivery operations. As cities and states across the country went into lockdown and began, in, began imposing on-site dining restrictions, Many restaurants were suddenly relying on third-party delivery apps for the bulk of their business. Restaurants operate on razor-thin margins in the best of times, so losing as much as 30% of profits on every sale was never going to work long-term for the majority of restaurants. Faced with the annihilation of the restaurant industry, major metropolitan areas beginning with San Francisco and extending to Chicago, New York City, Portland, and Seattle, as well as many others, began passing temporary limits on what the apps could charge for delivery, with some cities setting a cap as low as 10%. Many of those temporary caps are set to expire in the coming weeks and months, prompting city and state legislators to question whether or not to extend them or make them permanent as the restaurant industry continues to struggle. The question comes at a pivotal, pivotal moment. Delivery companies like Grubhub, Postmates, and Uber Eats had their most successful year to date, raking in record revenues, and yet none of them are profitable. Only DoorDash managed to step out of the red last year, and it only did so for one quarter. Meanwhile, as restaurants re resume on-site, dining as cities and states continue to open back up, but many are still burdened by the debt they accumulated over the past year. Some have gotten relief from the government, but others are still pleading, and, and caught in the middle are consumers who are shouldering most of, more of the, co the costs. Excuse me. Uh, Katie Connors is the advisory board chair with the Independent Restaurant Alliance of Oregon, a non-profit non formed last year to advocate for small restaurants and their workers. She was part of the coalition that convinced lawyers and lawmakers in Portland, Oregon to approve it ten, a 10% cap on delivery fees last July. As Portland's temporary restrictions approach their expiration date, she thinks, she, she thinks the recent vote in San Francisco creates a path forward for cities and the rest of the country to enact similar legislation. Permanent regulation is going to be absolutely necessary moving forward because these companies are not regulated by anything, says Connors. Uh, Connors, who recently managed two popular fa fast casual restaurants in Portland, recognizes that consumer behavior shifts towards convenience, and as a restaurant business model, and as restaurant business models shift to keep up, uh, it will be difficult, if not impossible, for restaurants to survive without establishing a presence on delivery platforms. But just as restaurants need the apps, so to uh, so so to do the apps. So too do the apps need restaurants for now. And as things currently stand, the relationship between restaurants and apps feels like a collaboration, more like a hostage situation. The way that the structure is inherently set up by these companies 
is sort of exploitative, Connor says. It's not a partnership when it's exploitative relationship are preying on the fact that these restaurants have no other options. And that, at least during the pandemic, the diners had no other options. Um, let's see, so I'm gonna read this last paragraph here and then we'll jump into the quick discussion at the end. Uh, in April, 2020, San Francisco Mayor London Breed passed an emergency order that put a ceiling on the total fee that third party delivery apps could charge restaurants, including delivery commissions, credit card fees, and service fees at 15%. It was the first of its kind in the nation and set off a chain reaction of similar legislation in other progressive cities across the country. The San Francisco order was set to expire in August, but the Board of Supervisors vote makes it permanent. A pending amendment to the legislation does include a major concession to the delivery apps, permission to change restaurants' higher fee for marketing and additional services. If the amendment passes, restaurants in San Francisco could opt into higher commission fees up from 15% to 25% or 30% in exchange for better visibility in the app. The delivery companies were living on 15% full stop, says Lori Thomas, the executive director of the Golden Gate Restaurant Association. Now they have the ability to add marketing to the bill, so it's kind of a give. So, what do you guys think is gonna happen? Do you think that the apps are gonna be able to start charging that 25, 30% again? I mean, look, I'll hand it to DoorDash. They said that they, for one quarter, was able to get out of the red, but for one quarter only. And that's the biggest Titan company of the gig economy when it comes to food delivery. So I hope things get better sooner than later. So once the economy starts coming together, I know we've been under uh, a big hit right now. So we'll have to see what happens. But what do you guys think? Do you think that they're gonna keep it temporary? Do you think it's gonna be permanent with the change, with the fees or what? And how do you think it's gonna affect us as drivers? Let me know down below in the comment section. And uh, I do want to take this time right now to thank all of our patrons over at patreon.com slash paid to drive. These people give a little something every month to support me in the channel. If you want to sign up, links in the description down below and in the pin top comment if you want to go and check it out. And I will give you shout outs and new videos and you can contact me directly and bypass my email on Patreon. Um, when you hear your name called, say, hey, Pete, I heard my name. So we got Marie Sabo Batwell, our ultimate driver, 100 bucks per month. We got Lee Peacock, Agus, Brian Pomeroy, Brian Richardson, Heidi Barnes, Kurt Paul, Serena Siddiqui, Tulsa Todd, William Boudreau, Alan G. Van Horn, Drew Hanor, Fernando Carranza, Frank Haviland, Fresh One, Jason Kesa, Justin Case, Katie Coppin, Lulu Laura, Natalie Mosley, Sarah Kestent, Scott Freisner, Sherry Cassidy, Stephen Neely, T. Breeze, Jenny Thomas, Matt Epperson, Nick G., Terrence Pacheco, and of course, Valerie Brown. Huge shout outs to all of you. Uh, again, if you want to sign up, links in the description down below or in the pin top comment. And also in the description is the app link for Get Upside. Make sure to download it. It's a free app for your smartphone so that every time you go to the gas pump, you can save money or at least get money back. Uh, all you do is download it for free, link down below, pump your gas, print out your receipt, take a picture of your receipt with the Get Upside Gas app, and within 48 hours or so, you'll get anywhere from 15 cents to 45 cents a gallon back, which is pretty fantastic. And if a friend or family member signs up using your code, you'll get paid every time they pump gas. It's called Get Upside. Link's in the description down below. Make sure to download it. And of course, um, if you want to uh, get a shirt like this, PTD Mod Squad, you can get it and others like it at paytodrivestore.com. Everything's on sale, paytodrivestore.com. And if you made it to the end of this video, leave a comment saying end 627 in the chat or the comments, end 627. Subscribe with all notifications on, hit that red subscribe button, turn on the notification bell to the right. And of course, let's get 150 to 200 likes on this video. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, get that money, get that honey, keep hustling, keep bustling. And we'll see you next time right here on Paid to Drive and pay to drive vlogs. Have a good one, everybody. Drive safe, be positive, and we'll see you on the next one. Take care.